Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. I remember when Yeshua said to Peter that he had a serious problem, that he was not someone who was pleasing to God, not someone that was behaving in a way that was correct. And why was that? Because Peter was making a tragic error, and that error was he was thinking as a man thinks. We ought not do that. We ought not think as human beings think, as we reason out a situation, arrive at a conclusion. In times of difficulties and hardships, trials and troubles, problems, we ought not say, how can I solve this? What should we do? Not think as a man with man expectations but turn to God. And that involves prayer, and it involves the study of His Word. In fact, if you are diligent in studying the Word of God, when difficulties happen, when problems manifest themselves, you are going to have insight, spiritual perspective, in order to know how to respond how to lean on God and find his, at times, supernatural, miraculous help to cause you to overcome that problem. As disciples of Messiah, we're called to overcome. Not simply to be overcome, but to overcome these things that God would be glorified, that our faith would be grown and built up so that we can take on the next problem, the next obstacle with assurance, knowing that God who was faithful in the past, the one who has began a good work in us, he will continue to move, deliver, help us to be overcomers so that we finish that good work it's finished in us by him that good work that he has begun well take out your bible and look with me to the book of isaiah and chapter 20 the book of isaiah and chapter 20 now this chapter in my opinion is very practical we look at the children of israel more specifically the children of Judah, that southern kingdom, and we learn principles that will change, alter our life, will cause us to do something, and that is this. It will cause us to walk in faith and not by sight. Now, it is unnatural for a human being to walk in faith. We tend to naturally make decisions based upon what we see, and there's a connection between what we have seen or are seeing and expectations. We ought not base our decisions upon sight, but we need to behave faithfully. What does that mean? Well, remember, and I say this frequently, there is a biblical connection between the word faith and truth. So faithfulness is when I behave, act, do something motivated by the truth of God, being instructed, taught by the truth of God, not by human reason. In the portion of scripture that we're going to look at from Isaiah, God is teaching the children of Judah that they need to rely upon him that he is their help. Now, we're going to meet a couple different individuals, one of which 
is the king of Assyria. He is a powerful man in the physical. He is the leader of a very large, vast empire that is growing. And how is it growing? By taking one nation over, going to war, being victorious, and adding that to its national power, its empire. And we're going to see that that is a message that the children of Judah are seeing. That Assyria is powerful and one nation after a nation is being brought into his subjection. But Judah, they're different. Why? Because they belong to the God of Israel. And therefore, they should see things differently. Not simply seeing one nation after a nation, another nation being brought into subjection to Assyria, but they should see. Just because that is the natural outcome, that has nothing to do with our expectations. Because we don't walk in the natural, we walk in the supernatural, in the truth of God that causes us to be conquerors in Messiah. So let's begin, look at verse 1, chapter 20, and verse 1, where it says, In the year that Tartan came to Ashdod. Now, the phrase here, Tartan, is not a name. It is a title. It is a title for the military leader. Not the king, but the supreme general of the Assyrian Empire. They called this one, regardless of his name, they called him Tartan. And he was coming to a place that, that I know very well because I live there now, and that is this town called Ashdod. And Ashdod at this time was a Philistine city. We need to realize something. Now, the Philistines, they were enemies of King David. David fought. Oftentimes, David was victorious over them. But this is the message. There are those within Judah, and they are trusting not in God, but in man. So this is being used as an example. So this military leader, under the leadership of the king of Assyria, he came to Ashdod. And he came because, it says, Sargon, this is the king of Assyria. He sent him, and this Tartan, this military leader, he fought against Ashdod and took it. Verse 2. So Ashdod, this Philistine city, one of five, it was taken, and this was caused to be a teaching tool for God in behalf of Judah, that they needed to learn something. And what was that? Look at verse 2. In that time, the Lord spoke, literally it says, Be'yad Yeshiyahu ven Amotz, saying. Now, Isaiah, the prophet, who's the son of Amotz, but notice what it says. At that time, the Lord spoke Be'yad in the hand. And this expression, in the hand, speaks of the fact that Isaiah the prophet was under the authority. So Isaiah spoke with authority that he received from the Lord. All of this is, and this is what the text is teaching us, it's divine revelation. So at that time when the Judeans, when they saw Ashdod fall, that that place was taken at that moment. Isaiah spoke, saying, God spoke to Isaiah, saying, go and literally open. Now, most Bibles will say removed, but it's word to open up. And the message is, is that Isaiah, for quite some time, he had been walking with sackcloth around his loins. 
This was a, a sign, a visible aid to tell the people, you need to repent. But now the, the time of repentance is over. And what's happening? Well, now it's the time of punishment. Because Judah did not repent. Now the message is not repent unto the Lord. But here's the consequences for lack of repentance. So God is speaking to Isaiah and he says to him, open up. That means remove the sackcloth from upon your waist and your shoe. This is referring to more likely sandals. Take off, remove from your feet. And thus he did and he went. How did Isaiah walk? He walked naked and barefoot. Now, barefoot was a sign of poverty. Poverty that was so strong, it made one in a desperate situation. One that was totally without any wealth whatsoever, that he could not even own a pair of shoes. And then secondly, not only do we see great poverty being barefoot, but nakedness. And nakedness speaks in the scripture towards shame. So Isaiah is giving a message. When you fail to repent, and sadly today, that message of repentance is greatly ignored by the believing community, by the nation of Israel, by rabbis as well we're not hearing what we should hear concerning repentance when we look at the spiritual condition of israel when we look at the spiritual condition of most believers they're not believing acting in faith doing the things that god would would have us to do and therefore there's a need of repentance but the leadership isn't calling people to repentance. In fact, in this day, in Isaiah's time, he was the only prophet calling for repentance. The only one saying that God's judgment is approaching. And by the way, most scholars, when we date this prophecy of Isaiah chapter 20, based upon names of individual, this uh, king of Assyria called Sargon, this was after the northern kingdom, those almost ten tribes, nine tribes plus part of the Levites, that northern kingdom had already been destroyed by Assyria and taken captive. And now we have those two plus tribes, Judah and also Benjamin with some of the Levites representing the nation, the kingdom of Judah. And we find that Isaiah had been calling them to repentance, but they did not repent. Even though they watched the northern kingdom, their brothers being taken captive. So look at the next verse, verse 3. And the Lord said, just as my servant Isaiah. Now, I like how God is speaking about Isaiah. The greatest compliment that you can have is to be thought of by God as his servant. Being faithful to the things of God. So God is speaking and he says, and this is, publicly to the children of Judah. Just as my servant Isaiah walked or went about, how? Naked and barefoot. For how long? Three years. Now think of that. Isaiah is told, remove your sackcloth, take off your shoes, and walk among the people naked and barefoot. Not just one time for a few minutes, but Isaiah went among the people naked 
Some people would say that this nakedness speaks of just undergarments. Others say, no, it means just that. You can do your own research and make your conclusion. But the word of God says he went about among the people for three years naked and barefoot, showing shame and being destitute, which is the outcome. And here's the key which is the outcome of faithlessness eventually. When, when God's judgment comes, those who are faithless, who do not embrace the truth of God, those individuals are going to find themselves in a desperate situation, being destitute and also full of shame. It is only when we walk in faithfulness to the truth of God trusting in God, believing in God, serving God, then are we not going to experience this shame and this emptiness, but we are going to have kingdom prosperity. Didn't say that we would have prosperity in this age, but we will have prosperity in the kingdom of God. And that's what matters. So Isaiah walked among the people naked, and barefoot for three years, and three is for the purpose of revealing something. It was for the purpose of, of demonstrating, confirming something. And that is that without faith, one will find themselves physically in a desperate situation, destitute, and spiritually shamed. And this was what he did for these three years, going about naked and barefoot. It was for, notice what the scripture says, a sign and a wonder concerning Egypt and Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia, we sometimes forget that Ethiopia, in the past, going back some 3,000 years, not only was Egypt, a very powerful and splendor from an earthly perspective empire, but so was Ethiopia. And today, if we look, now we know that there is the United Nations, and the United Nations, their headquarters is where? New York, the financial capital of the world. And it's interesting because the African so-called United Nations, they have an, an organization that tries to unite Africa like the United Nations attempts to unite the rest of the world. Now, of course, Africa is part of the United Nations, but there's an African uh, version of it. And where is it based? In Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa. And therefore, it just shows how Ethiopia had a great history. And in many ways, Ethiopia is growing and regaining this, this prominence that it had in the past. And this prominence of Ethiopia 3,000 years ago and Egypt, this caused many people to trust in them, to forge an alliance with them in order that they would, if they were attacked, would find help. So this allegiance to Ethiopia and Egypt was for them to trust in their power rather than in God. And we know, for example, King Solomon also made these political alliances rather than trusting in God. Verse 4. Thus the king of Assyria will lead the captivity of Egypt and the exiles of Ethiopia, the young and the old, and they will be what? Naked and barefoot, and their buttocks will be exposed, and thus, it says, will be the nakedness, or it's a different word, which speaks of, it's a synonym for nakedness, but also people understand it as shame, the shame of Egypt. So what the text is saying is this. 
those who trusted, perhaps those in Ashdod, the Philistines, they trusted in Egypt and in Ethiopia as through an alliance that if anything would happen, they would be attacked. Egypt and uh, Egypt and Ethiopia would come to their aid. But they trusted in Egypt and Ethiopia, but they did not come. In fact, what happened? We find that the king of Assyria, what did he do? He led the captivity of Egypt. He took Egypt captive and he sent Ethiopia into exile. And those individuals went both young and old, they went naked and barefoot. Now, here's the key. What the scripture is telling us is this, that Assyria, when they conquered a nation, they would strip the people, and all scholars agree here, they would strip them naked and make them go barefoot. Why? Well, it's much harder to, to resist, to fight, to run, to do anything without shoes and naked. So this was the practice of Assyria. And Isaiah going around in the same way was a testimony. If you fail to trust God, this is going to be your experience. This is what you're going to go through. And this is exactly what Ashdo, the Philistines, went through. Now look at verse 5. And they were dismayed and ashamed from Ethiopia, from their expectation. Now, this is a literal word, mabat, which means to look. And what it simply means is, and this is speaking about, the children of Judah that trusted in Egypt and Ethiopia, that if anything would happen to them, that they would come to their assistance. But now they're ashamed of that because their expectation, they look to, to Egypt for help. But, but Egypt, and here we find Ethiopia as well. What happened? They're no more. They're in captivity. They're in exile. So now it says they are dismayed. They're confused. There's nowhere to look for or look to. And they have shame because their expectation of Ethiopia and Egypt, their splendor. They thought that if they had this political alliance with Ethiopia and Egypt, that this would secure them from any attack. And now what happens? Well, Egypt and Ethiopia fell. And also a place very close to them, Ashdod. And notice what it says in our last verse, verse 6. And the inhabitant, the one who dwells in this island. Now, Ashdod, it borders the Mediterranean. It's right all along the coast. Now, the word here is the Hebrew word E. E means island. I realize that, that many English tra translators render this as a territory, region, or country, something along these lines. But the point is that it was an island. Why? It was surrounded by Judah and the Mediterranean meaning that there was no place for them to flee. They were an island unto themselves. And therefore, look at verse 6, and the dweller, the inhabitant of this place, Ashdod, says, and the inhabitant will say of this island in that day, what is in that day speaking to? Judgment. Behold, thus, we, we looked. That is, we had an expectation. Again, it's the word mabat. Mabat is looking for something, but in this context, it's looking with an expectation. 
So that one will say, on that day, we looked. And the implication is where, where we could flee there for help to be saved because of the king of Assyria. So they looked. And who were they looking to? Egypt and Ethiopia. But they're no more. They're in captivity. They're in exile. They've been defeated. They have been walked and paraded naked and barefoot. They're destitute and shamed. And therefore, the one of Ashdod has no one to help. No one to, to assist him. No place to flee from. And this is a message for who? The children of Judah. Because they had that same tendency of trusting in political and military alliances with Egypt and Assyria. And the message is a very simple one. Stop trusting in treaties. Stop trusting in peace agreements. Trust in God and do what he calls you to do. And that is a message that people need to hear today. All too often people say, is this a, a prophetic event, this, this peace agreement, this treaty that, that Israel has entered into at the time of this lesson with the United Arab Emirates? What Israel needs to do is not to trust that this is going to bring true peace to them, agreements with other nations. No. What brings peace and victory and ultimate Godly prosperity to a people is trusting in the truth of God. And that's what Isaiah's message is. Look at this text again, verse 6. And the inhabitant will say of this island, referring to Ashdod, and that day, behold, thus we, we look to where to flee there for help and to be delivered from the king of Assyria. But how will we flee? There was no where and no how to flee because Assyria was ruling everything here again. This is a message to Judah. Stop trusting in what you can see. Stop trusting in physical assistance. Believe in the word of God. Make the foundation of your life the truth of scripture. And walk in faith and not by sight. Not a difficult message to understand. But the question is, are we going to take that truth are we going to act in what the Word of God gives to us? Or are we going to be faithless and, and rest in the physical resources rather than in the spiritual revelation of the truth of God? This is a decision that every individual must make. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.